the only one that matters their full fidelity and commitment because it costs. These other guys don't cost nothing. They cost down the line when you're ignorant of it, but up front, God costs. That's man. Oh. <laughs> you speaking to me, and I already know what side I chose. Right, well, this is this for Ryan right here. I am the lover. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm, I, I want to know this too, because this is what blew my mind is we got so many emails and DMs in this space. And it was shocking to me how, you know, because even, even listen, a lot of people, I could tell we got some people that are still in the space of witchcraft that still watch the show. And some people that's, you know, that's kind of dibbling, dabbling, want to get out, don't know if it's all the way right, wrong. And they started talking about, uh, some, uh, one email came talking about how some of the chants that a lot of the witches use are actually coming from the Bible. I think yeah, Psalms, they use Psalms is a very popular chapter or mm -hmm. book of the Bible mm -hmm. that witches use. How is it possible that a witch can use actual you know, passages from the Bible to do their work? How is that possible? Sure, Kevin, I'll let you grab that one. <laughs> Before I answer that, uh, my wife just texted me, telling me to come off the phone. I wasn't. I was getting my scriptures, just in case she's still watching. <laughs> 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 Shout out the wife. Get the <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> so the question, wife, well, you look, you throwing them all. <laughs> That's right. Right. <laughs> right, 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 right. So the question is, how is it possible oh, I, that I witches can use this? Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Because there's this uh, book, very evil witchcraft book. Should I mention it? No. No, no I'm not going to mention no. it, no. But I would never recommend anyone to even look at it, pick it up. I wouldn't even recommend them to go online to check it out. This is how evil this book is. Wow. 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 I didn't even but anyway, the book is littered with uh, spells and so on. But every spell, every incantation, every ritual that the book requires, it's taken from the Psalms. Wow. Now, why is this? Well, simple. The Bible is a book of laws. The Bible is a book of rules and principles. Now, the way that they have it worded, it's literally putting in people's names and so on in certain psalms. And most of those psalms, you ready for this? Most of those psalms are psalms where David wrote when he was angry. So this is why you find like a lot of witchcraft workers, when they're sending curses, they're including those psalms. You ready for this part? The Christians do the same thing. So I did a teaching to tell people stop praying witchcraft prayers. And witchcraft prayers are prayers where you're sending a curse that was sent to you. You're, you're, in your prayers, you're saying, I'm sending it back to sender. But anyone from the witchcraft world and the young lady who you had, he will tell you the same thing. When you do that, God isn't hearing that. Because you know why? This book here says, bless those that curse you. Pray for those that despitefully use you and say all manner of things against you. That's what this book says. They're telling you, don't do that. Do the opposite of that. So anyone who is sending prayers back to senders and nonsense, they are engaging in sorcery. So the bottom line is, the Psalms are especially with the ones that David wrote, some real heavy ones where David said, break their teeth out and all kind of stuff like that. This is what they would chant, but they would put the person name who they put in the curse on. Mm. Would this become are the marching orders for the demon to, to attack this person? Now, let's be clear. Not because it's coming out of the Bible means that God has something to do with this. This is just a part of their evil wickedness that they're doing, but this has nothing to do with God participating in this or even aiding this person in attacking someone else. So let's just be clear with that. But what I want to get to, right, because I really think the audience needs to know this, I'm going to go back to this altar. See, because the altar is the center base for everything when it comes to sorcery. There, again, there cannot be no sorcery outside of an altar. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read that scripture I was telling you about, about uh, when Moses up on the mountain. And from there, I'm going to give you some points on the audience on how you can tell, and maybe you guys need to listen to this too, as to signs if someone is sending witchcraft attacks, attacks against you. Oh, that's good. Mm. Okay? 
So my friend got get up, upset because of what she's watching tonight and decided to retaliate on YouTube. Then I'm gonna. I, you know what? Answer. I thought about that too. Okay. I thought about that, and, and you know what? And while you was talking, I was thinking like, man, we should probably like look around the whole place, make sure they ain't leave nothing and stuff up in here. Well, you wouldn't know it. You couldn't see it. You can't see nothing, man. You see, that's again. You're still looking for something physical mm -hmm. to justify someone's evil. She Not left in that world. Something left, but it ain't, it ain't nothing you could see. So, in in uh, Exodus chapter 32, and I'm going to read to, from verse one to verse seven. And the reason why I'm reading this passage because I'm going to show you the effects that those who participate with these evil altars, what happens to them. Okay. So it says, and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. In other words, he's taking too long to come down from Mount Sinai where he went to meet with God. Verse 2. And Aaron, who was Moses' brother, and Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. So it's an idol now. Mm -hmm. And they said, These be thy gods. Now, I want to pause here for a second because, again, when this idol is made or this image or this shrine, I don't ever want you to believe behind, I want you to believe that behind every altar, every shrine, every image or an idol, there is a spirit. Watch this. Verse 4, and he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, these be thy gods, plural, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So they're giving the credit to demons now as opposed to giving it to God. Verse 5, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Verse 6, and they rose up early on the morrow and offered what? Burnt offering. So they are dedicating themselves to spirits, but not the spirit of God burnt offerings and brought peace offerings for these evil spirits and the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Now let's look at the effects of what this is going to do in verse 7. Mm. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They didn't drink no alcohol. They wasn't taking cocaine. They didn't smoke no grass. How did they corrupt themselves? spiritually now let's see why and how okay so i'm going to give you some scriptures and i want to show you exactly what's happening when a person is at an altar when a person is speaking to some shrine or what have you right so leviticus chapter 7 we're going to see a series of scriptures here to see exactly when you see the word altar outside of god's business we're going to see exactly what they're dealing with so Leviticus chapter 17, verse 7, talking about the children of Israel. Leviticus 17, verse 7 says, And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto who? Devils. So the reality is, if a person say they are a witch, you cannot be a witch if you don't practice witchcraft, because mm. that's what a witch does. You cannot practice witchcraft or have the power from witchcraft outside of an altar. The scriptures are telling you unequivocally clear that the altar is infested with spirits and the spirits will corrupt those who participate at that altar. God now is telling the children of Israel in Leviticus 17 verse 7, and they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils, exactly what Aaron and those was doing, after whom they have gone a whoring, this shall be a statue forever unto them throughout their generation. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32, verse 17, because you're going to see now a series of this. Deuteronomy 32, and verse 17. They sacrifice unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not. 
Remember Aaron said when they got the earrings and melting it down, all that stuff? And they said, they're giving all the credit to these gods. They're talking about evil spirits. So the point I'm making here, if this here table was an altar, okay, and the witch is doing their seance, whatever, you will not see it, but make no mistake, there are spirits at that altar, all right? Let's go to mm. Psalm chapter 106. Let's go to, see, unlike the lady, I'm coming with scripture. Psalms right, 106, right. Right. I'm, I'm giving you the rules. <laughs> Psalms 106, and we're going to read from verse 35 to verse 39. Listen to this. But, but, he's talking about the children of Israel, but were mingled among, sorry, let's go from verse 34. They did not destroy the nations, meaning the children of Israel did not destroy the Canaanites like God told them concerning whom the Lord commanded them. But they mingle or mix among the heathen and learn their works. And what were their works? And they serve their idols. That's what they were doing. Which were a snare or a trap to them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. Very clear. Verse 38. Mm. And shed innocent blood even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. So you see, just like with, Jesus, with God, when he uh, had the children of Israel do their sacrifices for the atonement of sins, the enemy mimics that also. And like I said to you in the early part of this podcast, the highest sacrifice in the spiritual realm is that of a blood sacrifice. Let's go to our last scripture, 1 Corinthians, New Testament now. So 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 10, this is one, this one is very interesting, verses 20 to 21, okay? But I say, this is Paul talking to the church of Corinth, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Meaning that anyone at that altar are participating, especially if they're identifying themselves as witches, warlocks, and wizards. This Bible is saying to you, crystal clear, all right? You should not fellowship with devils. Why? Who is sponsoring? What is the spiritual power sponsoring these people? Devils. Listen to verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. So God, through his servant, Paul, is telling the believer, as saved as you are, as Holy Ghost filled as you are, as armored up as you are, all of that would mean nothing if you intentionally go out there and put your hand to these things, because what you're doing is you're giving the enemy the right to curse you. How do we know this? Deuteronomy 28, beginning at verse 14. And he says to them, don't look to the left, don't look to the right, do not serve no other gods. However, verse 15, if thou choose not to hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God and observe to do all his commandments, watch, then shall these curses come upon you and overtake you. He's talking about future generation now. So you may say, well, Kevin, I'm not afraid of this lady, man. Who do she think she is? First of all, your assessment was, you assess her wrong because you're assessing her from a physical perspective. And they want that. They want you to look at them and say, okay, you may have more muscles than her. But she isn't just like with Balak and Balaam. Balak understood that I could not beat Israel physically. However, I could get an advantage if I bring in a sorcerer and shut them down spiritually. Because if I shut them down spiritually where everything is originated, then I have the advantage over them physically. So that's how the witchcraft worker thinks. He, he, the witchcraft worker thinks how the Christian ought to be thinking from a spiritual perspective. Now, I was telling you about those signs, right? Right. So I think I told you, but I started all of this out many years ago because I was dating a lady in my early 20s. I had no idea that... She, at the time, and her mother were into witchcraft. Now, Kevin is from the Bahamas, for right. everybody that doesn't know. So you're talking about island witchcraft. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. That's deep. Yeah. Right. So when I first met this lady, I was doing very well. I had a good job, living on my own. I had a motorcycle. I had a convertible vehicle. 
Yeah. And a whole six thousand dollars in the bank. I had money. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. So I was doing well until I met this girl, very beautiful girl. And when I met this girl, I started to become uh, unfocused, very depressed, had a lot of anxiety and panic attacks. Mm -hmm. And there were times, well, not times, but I would leave from work and go straight home, and literally close the windows sit I had a little tool kit in my kitchen and literally begin to weep for no for no reason again only since I started to date this girl my I was always good at my finances I couldn't save my money anymore everything was breaking down in my place I had to have it repaired but what made it worse was a, a, another it was upgraded I now begin to hear strange sounds in this place that only me live I would wake up through the night and hear like this old man's voice in the hallway. Or I would hear steps walking, and I had carpet, but the steps were like they were walking on wood. I would hear my pots and pans moving. I would literally feel this heavy presence come into my bedroom. My wow. hair would literally rise. Everything would go still, and I would feel these small tremors in my bed until it become, became violent. I went to my pastors, I, I shared it with them, and I could never forget this, and their wording to me was, Kevin, you're not getting enough sleep, uh, maybe you're up too late and you're not resting, and you know, whatever, whatever. In other words, they were saying, they were being nice and saying you're crazy. Okay. I know what I was experiencing, so my mother would come to visit me every so often. She'd say, son, why are you losing so much weight? What, what's going on with you? i say, mommy, I don't know, and when I'm telling her this, I'm literally weeping and crying, and telling her, mommy, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm telling her I'm sorry for. I became very recluse. The only reason why I went to my job is because what was paying me to pay the bills. But the minute I got home, I would close up everything and shut down. You hear me? Totally tormented. I, I dread when the night fall. When I saw that sun coming down, because I know what is going to take place in here, it's going to be a horror show. Wow. It got to the point that when I, when I went to my bedroom, as tired as I was, I would feel this invisible force pin me to the bed. Mm. And I'm trying to scream or say something and nothing can come out of me. One time when it happened, I had my television on. The television turned down. Whatever it was turned the volume down. And literally pinned me. And I could hear these voices over my bare head. They were like different languages. The only person who would even listen to me would be my mother. And I would explain it in detail. It was getting so bad, the voices now began to say to me, end your own life. Right. It was almost as if they led me up to that point where it became like I was looking at it as a relief. Now, I never told my mother that part of it because I know she would have been worried and she, it would have been a whole new different thing. The voices then began to switch on me. And it wasn't a voice no more, actually. It was a feeling that came on me. And the feeling was, end the lady's life and then end yours. So one day my mother came by and she says, Kevin, listen, I, I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, there's a lady up the street. She's a Christian woman. Why don't you let her pray for you? And my words to her, I said, Mommy, they are all crooks. Nobody is paying for, for, for me. Because I was so frustrated with the church at that point. Because this is a spiritual place. I came there with a spiritual problem. And they had no idea what was happening to me. So I went to the lady. Knock on the door. She asked who I was. I said, my name is Kevin. I'm your neighbor. You don't know me, but somebody tell me that you pray for people. Now, when this witchcraft spread on you, it agitates you. It makes you very impatient, very angry, particularly if someone is talking about God. They're quick to dismiss it or make fun of it or poke fun at it or, or just toss it to the side. So when she opened the door, she said to me, she did this. She said, son, they have you tied up. And when she said this, this, this spirit, that's what it was, a spirit of anger came on me. But I'm trying to subdue it because I'm doing my best to see if she could offer some kind of help. She invited me inside. And this woman, I didn't know she was a prophetess at the time, this woman pulled literally my file. She said, the house that you're living in, does it belong to you? I said, no, ma'am. I said, it's my mother's house. She said, you're going with a lady, and her mother wants you to marry her. And what they're putting in your home you will eventually end your life so that they could get the home. I said, no, no, no. Uh, uh, That's what I'm saying to myself. I said, no way in the world I could be. She goes on to say, and at this point, I'm doubting everything that she says. In fact, I'm getting more and more angry. 
She said, she said, where's this girl right now? Now the fact of the matter is we had just broken up the day before. Nobody knew. I said, she's right here where we live in that island. So she said, no, she's not. She said, in fact, you all two broke up yesterday. Mm -hmm. She said, to, to top it off, she's on another island with your shirt and your pants that she snuck out of your home on advice from her mother. And she said, son, she's going to come back and she's going to pretend as if she's making things right, only to bring those clothing back in your home. Wow. And she said to me, the day you put that on, mm -hmm. you will lose your mind instantaneously. At this point, I'm still fighting in my mind. This cannot be true. I refuse to believe her. Then she said something I never discussed with anybody. She said, son, what I see further is not good. So I said, what do you mean? She said, the mother is undermining the daughter. I said, understand that. She said, one of two things are going to happen here. You will either kill yourself or you will kill her and then kill yourself. So that was it for me. That was, she had it sealed for me. Two days later, two days later. That lady came back. Two days later, the lady came back, came to the house. Hi, baby. Hi, honey. My sweetie pie. And I rushed up to her and told her everything the woman said. But again, when witchcraft was on you, wow. even though I'm telling her this, I don't believe it still. Even though the woman pulled my card. Really? Because so you're blinded. I'm spiritually. totally spiritually. And that's what witchcraft does. So she was trying to resist me at first. And when I told her everything, she stopped. She said, who told you this? Of course, I was on the Christian then. Now, so why would I, you tell you know, that lady everything you knew? <laughs> well, I don't know. Under witchcraft powers, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I, I guess. So she said, Kevin, who told you this? And I said, don't you blankety, blank, blank, blankety. <laughs> so she said, follow me. And I watched her whole continent just fell. She said, follow me. And she took me to the rear of her car, put a key in, pulled out that outfit, popped that back trunk, and my shirt and pants is laid right out in the back Insane. trunk. Insane. So I said, to her, I said, at this point, I am just so, I'm like, how could you... I don't understand this. So anyway, I had some lighter fu fluid in my home. So I kept it there. I be road, the beach wasn't too far from where I lived. I took the stick that I found out there and I took it out. And I doused it with the lighter fluid and, and struck the match, which probably took about two hours to burn. Mm -hmm, mm, mm -hmm. Mm. Well, guess what? They not her, but her mother turned up the heat. Two weeks later, I gave my life to the Lord. That was in 1996, May 17. If God's prophet didn't intervene, would you have done? Would you have worn the outfit? Oh, definitely, definitely. Because I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have known. She would have got it right in there, and put it right back there. Thank and, God and for mommy that right. told you, let's go. Go to the some right. Prayer. Exactly. Right. Oh exactly. Gosh. So, uh, I start to have, I mean, a myriad of dreams. When I said dreams, the most horrific. Kevin have evil a dream. You dreams. can put some money on it. We ain't no gambling people, <laughs> right. baby. But if Kevin have a dream, you put everything you got on the dream. Repeatedly, and I would be dreaming about these folks for the most part, and the dreams when they are not dogs coming after me, biting me, snakes. I would, I mean, repeated deceased people, deceased relatives or friends that I knew that passed. They would show up in my dreams consistently. When it wasn't that, I would have sexual dream after sexual dream. I used to wake up tired in the morning from sex in my dreams. Wow. Literally. Crazy. One Sunday I came from church and what I would normally do was stop home, change and go to my mom because she would cook on Sundays and I would eat there. And I met this commercial size mayonnaise jar at my front door. Tiff. All the wrapping on the outside was removed. And in this jar, it was halfway filled, dirty, filthy. It's in real life? Real life. Okay. And cut up in this jar was snake, cockroaches, rats, you name it. So I called my mother. I said, Mom, you wouldn't believe this. And I told her, she said, Kevin, don't touch that. She came down there. She put it in the plastic and we just threw it. I, if I had the sense I know now based on these things, I would have burned it. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, again, the, but pe when it comes to witchcraft, the one who's coming after you, they understand. There are laws to protect you if they come after you physically. You may be great in size. So what do they do? How do I get an advantage over this person? I come after them spiritually. Can I say this? Don't forget what you're going to say mm -hmm. after this. I want to give you just a quick 30-second story 
um, of the opposite that if he hadn't listened. So my grandfather, who was a pastor, he um, was married and he started to date somebody else and married this other woman, you know, he went to the Rolling Stone. So he did wrong by her. And my aunt always said that this woman said to her, I'm gonna get him and he's not, and you're gonna see it in a few weeks. She went to go tell one of his ex-wives and she said, oh, her, her root work is stronger than mine. And she just remembered she said that, right? My grandfather wore a hat like Kevin wears glasses. You just never saw him without this hat on. For 25 years, he has his hat. For 25 years, he owns his bicycle shop. For 25 years, he takes the hat off, puts it right there. When he gets off of work, he puts it back on his head. Same routine, this is what he does. A few days after this lady tells my aunt this, he puts his hat on the thing, he cannot find his hat anymore. Same hat he has put in the same place for all of these years, the hat goes missing. Wow. He's looking around, where could the hat be? Nobody can find it. Kevin, a few days later, where does the hat come up? Same exact spot. Right. Mm. Says, wow, my hat come back. Hi, where did that happen? My grandfather put that hat back on his head, was in the hospital mm -hmm. a week later, mm -hmm. dead. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So much so, I, I never forgot that story. That's kind of the only story I ever heard that happened to until Kevin shared his story. But just earlier this year, I was out of the country and I couldn't find my headscarf. I looked all around, high and low for my headscarf. The last day of the trip, it appeared in a very normal position. And I'm like, they're like, oh, we found your headscarf. You can shoot the trash. <laughs> right. It's trash. If I had a lighter, <laughs> I would have lighted it up at the resort. <laughs> right. had nothing. But I don't play with stuff like that. But continue on. I just wanted to share a testimony right. of what happens of the opposite of these things. This is real mm -hmm. life stuff. That's why I don't take gifts from people. I don't take, oh, I have a gift for you. No, thank you. Throw it in the trash. I let people know ahead of time before they see me in public. I don't take any gifts from anybody because it's a point of contact mm -hmm. for a witch. Go ahead, Kevin. I, don't, I need you right. to finish your so, point. But. So the dreams start to come dime a dozen, and they were tormenting dreams. And one night I was in my, and also the sleep paralysis you guys know what that is, right? Sleep paralysis? Yeah, yes. I actually had that happen okay, to me a couple right. times. Well, for those who don't know in the audience out there, sleep paralysis is where you're conscious, fully conscious awake, but you cannot move. And the truth is there's the, it's a spirit that's holding you down. That spirit can come two ways. Either it comes through a generational to-do or someone is projecting witchcraft at you. They're sending spirits to torment you. Anyway, I, would, I was having this repeatedly. One night, I was in my bedroom, and I was literally sitting up watching the television. Again, I felt when this presence came, and it was an evil pre I could literally feel it. Everything went silent, meaning that I stopped. The TV is still on, and I just froze, not afraid, but to see what's going to happen. I look at the end corner of my bed, Tiffany, and I didn't see this thing because it's invisible, but I watched this thing sat, and I watched the indentation of a human hip on the corner of that bed. This time I'm a Christian, and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to leave. I watched it sign some more, determined, and the scriptures started to come, and it just left, and the whole feeling left. Two nights later, I woke up through the night. Why? Because I hear this invisible creature flapping and flying from one end of my room to the next. And it turned around. A piece of righteous indignation came in me. And I sat on that bed, and the scriptures began to flow. I heard, listen to me, I heard this loud screeching scream. But right after that, because I had like these blinds and my, these vertical blinds, literally God is my witness, I watched these blinds part like the Red Sea, and the screeching loud evil sound rushing through the screen here. Wow. So for me, my friend, when people come talking nonsense to me but witchcraft isn't real or someone saying they're witch and I'm saying people have no idea of the implication mm -hmm. these people represent. After this lady we ended, years later I got involved with another lady and I said to myself, what that lady did to me only could have been preparing me for what I was about to get into next mm -hmm. because tr things got worse. It got worse? Things got worse. <laughs> when I said worse, Things got worse, and the thing about it, again, for me, when it comes to dreams, it all starts right there. Mm -hmm. And I would dream about this lady just about every night, but I would always dream about her and her father. And in the dream, she's always, now remember, at this point, I'm a Christian. 
in the dream, and this is why the arm of God is key, in the dream, she's always inviting me where she is. Like, I had to cross a line. It was like the only way that they could have any kind of effect on my life, I had to write. So every dream, she would be, come, baby, come over here. And one time, she was trying to invite me. It was like I was dressed to go to a service. Jesus. And she was standing up across from me. And I saw her father at the rear, at the, my right peripheral. And this guy is blood naked. Blood naked, and he has his hands like this, and his, his, his legs, like a crop, and he's walking, passing me. Right. I had another dream. In the dream, the same lady, she's at a four-way crossing. And at this four-way crossing, she's wearing this pink lingerie, right? And high heel pink shoes. And I'm passing. Now, to be clear, in these dreams, we already finished our relationship. I don't go there anymore. But this is the evidence she's sending curses at me. So she's wearing this pink lingerie. She, says, she said, Kev, Kev, let's get back together. And while she's saying, Kev, I'm taking off over here. I, I run in over here from her. And I watched this girl twist her neck like this. And this huge vein came here. And these big, huge boulders, they had to be like about 13 to 14 feet high and just as wide. And I watched, she could, for whatever reason, she couldn't move from where she was. And I watched this lady grab these boulders as if they were paper. And she threw them in there at me. So I'm running, I'm running, 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 running. But as I'm running, I could see the shadow on the ground from the rocks in the sky. And I knew this thing was going to hit me. And as I'm running, I turn and brace to be hit. And all I heard was boom, 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 boom. And I heard a second one. Boom, 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 boom. There was this invisible shield My around God. me. Put on the whole armor of God. Mm. And the invisible shield, when it hit it, every one of the rocks bunks right back in a direction. Mm. Let me take you a little bit deeper. The first girl. It's deep. You mm, get, deeper? get deeper. The first lady, we've been broken up. And again, I, the dreams were coming. And I had this dream one night. Well, fuck, I was actually on my bed reading my Bible. And I was kind of frustrated because it's like the dreams won't stop. So I slid out of the bed, give a two-minute prayer, Lord, reveal to me whatever it is, whoever's doing whatever to me. Something happened that is not normal for me. Crept back in the bed, went straight to sleep. However, my spirit appears in the mother house of this girl. The, set, the first one. And I'm hovering in the ceiling area. I can't see no flesh. So clearly it was the spirit, my spirit. And I could see the mother bed, the floral sheet, and the bed head is right where the window is. And the window curtain is the same design as the sheet. And I could see where the mother was apparently laying down because that was kind of messed up. But the other side was fixed. And there was a bedroom in that room. Sorry, a bathroom. And the bathroom door was cracked open. And the light was on, so I assumed she was in there. My eyes projected on her nightstand. And on the nightstand, Tiffany, there was a small white square paper with a white candle sitting on it. I don't know how this happened in the dream, but I zoomed straight in on the paper. And on the paper was Kevin Ewing, Kevin Ewing, Kevin Ewing, Kevin Ewing, Kevin Ewing. Three days later, I buck into a daughter whom we have broken up now. And I said, I have a question for you. I said, uh, I said, I'm not crazy. I said, I'm going to ask you a few questions. I just need you to answer. And I asked her about the description of her mom's house. And she stepped back and she said, how would you know that? Everything that I described about the room, I didn't tell her about the candle low. Right. <laughs> right. Everything was on point. She confirmed everything. So this is what brought me to the reality of this book and the rules. This mm. real. And the whole idea is for Satan to make you believe that this hocus pocus and this just poison is a witch, and uh, you're trying to help somebody. No, you're, they're tying you down spiritually. So the dreams, like I said, they came, but I never connected the dreams with the spiritual realm. So I want to show you a few scriptures as principles on how this works. So you would see I'm not making this up. This is not my opinion. So let's go into scripture, okay? And let me, let me say this. For everybody watching that's like, why does he keep going to scripture? The reason you enjoyed the witch po podcast is because you don't know scripture. Mm -hmm. And so you have to dig, you know, I love that he called it a Bible study, but this is really bullet training. You yeah. just learn how to load up a clip. Right. That's really what this is. 
So just keep that in mind. Every scripture he's giving you is a bullet. Mm. Right. I like that. And hold tight, Pastor, because I want to remind the audience, guys, we are giving, we are doing a free giveaway. All you got to do, click the link in the bio. We are giving away 10 copies of the Year of the Bride, guys. 10. And, and Lana, go ahead and pull up those photos so we can show that we actually deliver on our promises. And we also going to double on that, and we're going to give 10 prayers that work, 10 of those. So we got these wonderful generals of, the, of, of spirituality. They authored these books. We're going to hold it down, and we're going to give you 10 copies of each. All you got to do, take 20 seconds, click the link in the description or the link that I'm getting ready to drop in the chat right now. And, uh, yeah, you're going to qualify, and we're going to email you tomorrow and let everybody know who won one. Nice. There you have it. Okay. So in First Kings chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, it says, And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Verse 2 of 1 Kings 3. Only the people sacrificed in high places because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. Verse 4. Listen carefully. And the king, being Solomon, went to Gibeon to sacrifice, to sacrifice there. For there was, for, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings that Solomon offered upon the altar. So, a thousand burnt offerings. Now, if sacrificing, sorry, burning one animal on that altar, showing dedication to the deity, imagine a thousand of them. Now, because of this sacrifice, and I'm showing you, I'm showing you the, 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 the correlation between, if a per, and this is just principle, if a person is working sorcery on you, they most definitely have to deal with an altar. And now you're going to be flooded with evil dreams, dogs running after you, snakes and animals and alligators, and all kind of vicious stuff. So after this big sacrifice that Solomon did, listen to verse 5. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in, in a, a dream. dream didn't end there let's go to uh let's go to genesis 15 and i'm just going to summarize it for you genesis 15 verses 7 to 18 god is now visiting abraham for the second time he had visited him originally in chapter 12 of genesis he comes back in verse 15 reiterating the same promise abraham say lord i don't know how this is going to happen He's almost 100 years old. His wife, Sarah, is just behind him in age. He says, because only this guy of my house from Damascus, Eliezer, whatever his name is. So God says, no, the seed that I promised you is going to come through you. What should God tell him? God tell him to go get some animals and sacrifice them on the altar. And the Bible says, Abraham went into a deep sleep. So physical Abraham is over here on the bed asleep. God is now speaking to Abraham, but not to physical Abraham. He's speaking to the real one, the spirit of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And God is showing him in the spiritual realm what I have already done. The plans that I already have for Israel. Even to the point that after Abraham would be off the scene, God is still showing him the future in the spiritual realm. So the bottom line is, your dreams is the portal to take you into the spiritual world. Mm. That's what you're saying. It may not make sense to you. So the witchcraft worker, when they go to the altar with all of your paraphernalia or chanting your name or writing it like I saw on my own or have some personal item of yours there, so these spirits, okay, familiar spirits, also masquerading spirits, are going to be projected to you in the spiritual realm. So all of a sudden now, you're going to begin to have dreams about these people who are doing stuff on you. But Kevin, how do you know it's them? When they're repetitive in your dreams. Mm. Over and over. So when you see these things, don't be shocked. Don't be surprised when this happened. Because at that point, this person is fighting you, but they're not fighting you physically. They're coming at you spiritually. So this is why the arm of God, this, first of all, you need to be safe. Because the arm of God and all of these things that you're asking, this is a spiritual package for the believers of Jesus Christ. So I hear a lot of people who are not safe, who don't, who don't believe in God. Child, no weapon form against me shall prosper. Excuse me? 
<laughs> you, you have not signed on to receive these benefits. So the weapons that are formed will work against you. And another thing too, if the weapons are working against a believer, now we're on a different term here now because according to uh, Proverbs 26 verse 2, it says the curse causeless or whatever the cause cannot affect someone. So if a Christian is being affected by sorcery, then there's some kink in his or her armor. There's wow. something that they're doing. There's some sin mm. that you know, they have yet to confess. It can be something as little as the, the belt of truth. Belt of truth. Now you tell, you're exaggerating. Lying. You're telling a little bit of lies, right. a lot of bit of lies. Unforgiveness. And what does a belt do? It keeps on clothes. That's too big for you. The armor is already too big for you. So once you start telling lies, the belt of truth comes off, your armor falls down, and those fiery darts are hitting you right in the face because it has nowhere else to go. It's very simple. You can lose right. your armor. And another thing, too, I want to add this in here before we go into the next point. So, and Tiffany said it just now about taking gifts and so on. So a witch could come not announcing themselves as a witch. That's right. And there are certain things that they would give you as simple as a, a bottle of water. That's right. In the book of Joshua, chapter 6, God told Joshua what he needed to do in order for him, God, to supernaturally collapse the walls of Jericho. And of course, it was a go around the city for seven days, go around seven times on the last days, blow the trumpet, and so on. So God says, when you do that, the walls will fall. In chapter 6 of Joshua, verse 17 to 18, he now pauses and he says, okay, now let me be clear with you. Do not touch anything that's in Jericho. Now, why is this? Because Jericho was a place where they serve idols. And see, idolatry and witchcraft, it's like uh, a communist country. Everything is owned by the devil. Nothing belongs to you. Everything, once you dedicate to the devil, everything that you own belongs to him and everything is cursed. And anyone who takes anything from you or you give that to anyone, then that opens the door for curses to be in their life. So he says, do not touch, or touch of the accursed thing. Listen, least you become cursed and by extension, the entirety of Israel. He made it very clear. Of course, we know they went and the walls collapsed and everything. But this guy by the name of Achan, he took some stuff and hid it on this tent. None of his family knew. So they went to fight a nation that was the fraction of the size of Jericho called Ai. And I think 300 of them got killed and the rest came running back. Mm. Joshua goes before God and says, God, how could this be? You promised me that wherever the sole of my feet shall tread, that have you given unto me. As he was with Moses, so shall you be with me. Listen what God says. Because remember only Achan said, God says, get up, for Israel has sinned against me. Now, why is this important? Because you see, when you take the accursed thing and bring it to where you live, everyone who dwells there also is simultaneously under the curse. Yep. At the end of the day, God says to deal with this, kill them, stone them, and burn them. But not just Achan, his wife, his children, cat, rabbit, everybody die as a result of what this man did because he took up the accursed thing the word accursed simply means something that is marked for destruction so the minute i took this i became marked in the spiritual realm so when demons see this oh we got this one here they could quote scripture all they want they have something that belongs to us we have the right to fight them mm. when i'm thinking about dreams i, I don't know if because we all dream mm -hmm. and the way you breaking down these dreams you got me reflecting on my dreams and I just kind of wake up and shrug them off. But is there anything, is there any such thing as a random dream or is, is every dream connected to the spiritual world? To me, I think you should take every dream serious because you're dealing with the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. So for me, this is what I say. Well, let me give you a perfect example of this. That same scripture I gave you in 1 Kings 3, and it spoke about Solomon. God visited him in verse 5 in a dream. And he said to Solomon, now remember, I love to be very, very open. Solomon is asleep because so, if, if God is visiting visiting him in a dream, a dream means the person is asleep, not a vision. A vision is when you are wide awake and I could see an angel come here, but nobody else could see it. So Solomon is asleep, and this is how deep the spiritual world is. Solomon is asleep, his physical body. But the Bible says God came to Solomon in a dream and asked him, what would you have me to do? But he isn't talking to the physical. He isn't going to the bed of sleeping Solomon. Hey, Solly, wake up, Solly. Yup, you sleepy? No. He's talking to the spirit of Solomon. And that's the part of you that is engaged in the spiritual realm when you're dreaming. 
So he says, what do you want from me? He said, well, you will go to my father, David. Uh, he won his wars and so on. He says, all I really want to lead your people is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. God says, because you have asked of that and not for riches, not for the neck of your enemy, neither long life, behold, I've given you that plus wealth and riches, such as none has been before, even after you. And if you continue in doing my commandments, you will have long life. The evidence of this, what was given to him in a dream, the Bible says, and Solomon woke up out of the dream and the next day, there was these two prostitutes, both of them had a kid, and one rolled over on their child and killed the child and switched it with the one who had another child. So they had to go before Solomon to judge this. And both of them were crying that this is their child. So Solomon called in the God and says, bring a sword with you, cut the child in half, and give it to both parents. Solomon knew in his wisdom that the mother who truly bore his child would not have it and said, let the other one keep it, which is exactly what happened. So this wisdom that was given to him, I didn't read in the Bible where he went to uh, Jerusalem University. I didn't read where he went to Palestine High. Where was this given to him? In the dream. So somebody comes to you in your dream. Say, hey, Deshaun, I brought this piece of cake for you. Have a slice of it. Now that you know the principles, it's not a dream. They're feeding your human spirit. Ever since you've had that dream, you were sick, always having strange stuff happening to you. But every time you go to the doctor, there's nothing that they can find wrong with you. So you see in the dream how a person can be polluted spiritually. What is this called? The spirit of infirmity. Remember in Luke chapter 13, verse 10, the Bible said Jesus is in the temple preaching, and all of a sudden he stops his preaching. He says, hey, you miss. A lady who was bent over for 18 years. Listen to what he says to her. He says, you have a spirit of infirmity. He comes off the pulpit. He puts his hand on her and rebuked the spirit that was sent upon her. The Bible says immediately she stood up straight. So you cannot, ex you cannot say, I don't really believe in the spiritual realm. It will be to your disadvantage. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm happy you brought that up, too, because I'm, I'm sitting here, you know, with a prophetess as well. So I can imagine your dreams also mean a lot to you as well. And you probably started noticing some patterns. Like you said, you, the tsunami happened. You woke up. I, I can imagine that probably other people that might have gifts or that this might be, I guess, the, the, uh, the best question I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of is how does someone know? that their dreams are anointed in this way? Like, how do, how do you know? Do you, do you need to see, wait until you see well, that's consistent a great question. patterns So we're talking or? about the king in the book of Daniel. Was the king saved? In the book of Daniel. I'm in Matthew The answer right is now. no. I, I know, I know, okay. I know. It's a good place to be. Good place to be. <laughs> I love that. It's a great place to be. Stay there. Kevin, was the king in the no. book of Daniel saved? No. And yet this king had dreams. Neither was Pharaoh. Neither was Pharaoh. He, but he had dreams, correct? Mm -hmm. He had to call Daniel to interpret the dreams. Mm -hmm. Well, he actually he called the witches and warlocks and sorcerers to interpret the dreams, but they couldn't. So they, uh, they, they called then Daniel to do the job. But you don't have to be saved to have dreams no. is the point that the Bible taught us, right? What do you do with these dreams, even in your ignorance? Well, number one, Joseph said, the interpreter of all dreams is God, so let's go to him. That's number one, you go to God. but. Even if you don't know what you're talking about right now, even if you're one day old in this and you've been having dreams all your life, you have to start stewarding the revelations and visions and supernatural experiences that God has given you well. That means that you take out a piece of paper and pen or a Bible a app on your phone and start logging your dreams. As much as you can remember about that dream, you write it down. Why? Because you can never remember all of that revelation in your mind in great detail. Mm -hmm if you wait a week out or a month out. Yeah. As soon as you wake up, no matter how tired you are, even if it's in the middle of your night, you write down that dream. Then you go to God and say, I have no idea what this dream is about. Can you reveal it to me? You would be surprised as to how, um, I'll never forget there was a woman that, you know, was working with Kevin and she said she had this dream of this uh, woman trying to breastfeed her. And she had no idea what it meant, right? She's asking God what it meant. Kevin on his own is giving examples and he goes, and if you have a dream of somebody trying to breastfeed you, and she's like, what? Wow. You don't know how God will answer your questions. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to be of the thought, I have no idea what this is. This is super frustrating. God is God. 
right? He doesn't want you ignorant. He doesn't want you confused. God is God. So if you have these dreams, you steward it well, and you say, God, I need help interpreting this. I haven't got to this part of the Bible yet. I have no idea what you're telling me. You'd be surprised of what you're going to run into, who you're going to run into that says, hey, have you been dreaming about crabs? You know what this means, right? Have you been dreaming about dogs and snakes? You know what this means, right? Have you been dreaming about being in your old house with your grandma? You know what this means, right? And you're like, mm. oh my gosh, I didn't even have to ask you. This is wild. So that's where you start. It's not about you figuring it out or knowing it all. It's about you stewarding what God gave you well and, and, and showing God your dependence and saying, I don't know. Can you show me how? So first of all, the only one I know that's that's in the black community is if you dream about fish, somebody pregnant. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. That's, yeah, the, one, that's, the, one you that's yeah. the one. That's the one. you get in trouble for having a dream. You know, somebody yeah, it got me in trouble without the teenager. It's, a, it's like we having dreams about fish. Who's pregnant around yeah. here? And I'm like, is right, that a fact? Right. Is that a fact, by the way? Yeah. See, well, when it comes <laughs> to dream, they have what they call uh, dream markers. So in some societies, okay, let's go back to the Bible. Let's go back to Genesis 37. The Bible says that Joseph had a dream, and in this dream, he dreamt how he was in the field binding his wheat, and so was his brothers. But all of a sudden, his wheat, because they would bind it and lay it down, all of a sudden, his wheat stood erect, and it rose in the sky, and all the 11, the 11 brothers' wheat bowed to him. So go back to the same principle as the fish. People that dream, their dreams will mostly be relative to your environment, to your culture. Why? Because you would know what those symbols mean. If you're a mechanic, if you're a carpenter, a seamstress, most of your dreams will be base. Because in those cases, which are known as symbolic dreams, they're more easier to interpret to understand the spiritual messages that are being given to you. Then they have what you call uh, straight dreamers. Straight dreamers are those people, and I used to be like that, and sometimes it still do happen. Exactly how you saw it in the dream is exactly how it panned out. Mm. Right. Then you have what you call self-manufactured dreams. This come, and this is also dangerous. This comes as a result of a person who's overwhelmed, uh, tired of thinking about something. For example, let's say you went and take a, a blood test, and you become worried that what if this thing come back HIV positive or whatever, and you actually had a dream about it. Now, even though it's a self-manufactured dream, you should still cancel the dream because it could also be a familiar spirit again coming to get you to agree with an illness. Mm -hmm. See, the spirit itself cannot operate in your life outside of the agreement of the victim. That's the purpose of the dream, mm -hmm. to seal a covenant, to lock a covenant with this person. Mm -hmm. Now, this is why I say that we coexist with spiritual beings. But with spiritual beings, especially those on the evil side, they're not coming looking for no casual relationships. That don't work for them. What works for spiritual beings is covenant. Why? Because outside of a covenant, they have no legal right over a person. So when it comes to dreams, you must take it seriously. I, when I was going through those things, I was talking about those ladies, because I went into fasting, because obviously the church couldn't help me, so I did it on my own. And I, I'm proud to say that I perform self-deliverance through prayer, fasting, and being committed to the things of God. But what was interesting, though, during those times, I would repeatedly have dreams of me preaching all over the world. Had no desire ever to be a preacher. This was never on my list. No bucket list, no paper. Never have I ever thought about being a preacher. In fact, I thought being a preacher was something you do when you have no more life as a man, and then you go do those things for God. That would, honestly, that's the way that I looked at it. And what God was revealing to me, just like with Abraham, just like with Solomon, just like with Gideon, he was showing me the future. See, because in the spiritual world, everything was already said there. This is why when God showed Abraham what he showed him, he showed him what was already done. In fact, your Bible says to you in Ephesians 1 verses 3 to 4, Blessed be the Lord our God who has already, past tense, blessed us with not some, but all spiritual blessings in heavenly places or the spiritual realm. Verse 4 says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So what the scripture is saying before God, set the foundation of the world, he sorted out every individual in terms of what they're supposed to be in the earth. This is why the job of a witch, why I will never respect one, is to alter that destiny. Mm -hmm. And that's why God hated. it. 